Hi, I'm Michael Gilbo, and I am currently in the process of narrating C.L. Bevel's book, Bubba and the Dead Woman, a funny murder mystery set down in Texas. So uh, this will be on Audible very shortly, or maybe now, depending on when you're watching this. And I thought I'd give you a little bit of a view into uh, what I'm doing as I'm narrating the book. All right, here goes. Chapter 10. Bubba Goes Back to Jail. Wednesday through Thursday. As it turned out, the subpoena would have to wait. There was a bit of excitement over at the caretaker's house when one of the officers yelled from out back. It drifted over to Bubba and Ms. Demetrius. I found something! Sheriff John Hedrick, although normally graceful for being such a big man, stumbled over his own legs trying to get off of Bubba Snotty's front porch and around the back of the little house. But first, his little squinty eyes sought out Bubba's large frame, like a hound dog follows a very intriguing smell. He eyed Bubba like he eyed all criminals with an unspoken warning. Don't go anywhere right now, here. Bubba glanced at his mother curiously. She looked back at him, equally inquisitive. He shrugged with a definitive, I have no idea what they're talking about, expression on his handsome face. He offered his arm to his mother, having to stoop a bit in doing so. She took it, and they strolled up to the veranda of the snotty mansion, with its fifteen Grecian columns supporting the upper deck. He gave a little assistance to his mother as she mounted the steps and handed her over to Adelia Cedarbloom. Adelia said, Wonder what they found, Ms. Demetrius said haughtily. Donuts, undoubtedly, Adelia guffawed loudly. The police weren't friends of the cedar blooms any more than the snotties. Bubba shrugged again. Then Adelia said, Well, I best be getting back to the house cleaning. Them lead crystals on the chandelier ain't gonna unfasten themselves and take a plunge in my bucket. She guffawed again at her own joke. I think you need to give Miss Adelia a raise, Bubba said wryly. Miss Demetrius gazed at the back of Adelia as she entered the oversized front doors of the mansion, struggling to get one side open. Presently, she gave the door a solid kick with her foot, and it swung open. I shall consider it, his mother noted waspishly. I already pay her double what any other housekeeper gets around these parts. Obviously to Bubba, Ms. Demetrius was feeling a mite curmudgeonly. That sheriff get his paws on your little black book? He was referencing to Ms. Demetrius's list of poker numbers, which included names of participants, dates of games, money earned and places where games had been and were to be held. Ms. Demetrius sniffed at him. Then she whispered to him, It's in my garter. Jesus Christ, Mama! he expelled forcefully, taking a step backwards. Did you have to tell me that? They searched through my drawer of privates, she said indignantly. I nearly bashed Sheriff John's head in with your grandfather's mahogany cane. Their warrant didn't say anything about that man putting his grubby, no-account fingers through my underwear. I'm going to have to take a flamethrower to the whole lot. Sheriff, ha! Speak of the devil. Bubba muttered as just that individual came striding around the edge of the big house with two deputies following closely on his heels. One of the deputies was Steve Sims, and he was smiling so widely it seemed as if a little kid could fall right in. Don't you try to run, Bubba Snotty, Sims yelled suddenly from halfway across the yard. Bubba sighed. Who's running? he asked mildly. It was quite the humid day outside, and he wasn't inclined to exercise lately anyway. Even Sheriff John was mildly annoyed. As the three men reached Bubba and Ms. Demetrius, he said, Put a cork in it, Sims. Bubba ain't going anywhere, exceptin' with us. Sheriff John held up a clear evidence bag with a gun in it. Do you recognize this, Bubba? Ms. Demetrius took a step forward peering closely at the gun in the plastic bag. "'Why, that's your father's forty-five, Bubba,' she muttered. She pointed at the handle. "'You can see where he made notches for every—' "'Well, he made notches for—' "'It wasn't many killed, anyway. 
she finished abruptly. A faint stain of red colored her face. It was for every time he went to Tokyo on leave. That rotten dead bastard, if I hadn't garroted him before, I'd certainly garret him now. Actually, I don't believe I ever saw it before, Bubba mentioned. He hadn't. His mother had kept it hidden away, and for some reason the demon-like child he had been hadn't thought to search his mother's closet for goodies such as that. Either that, or he had instinctively known what she would have done to him had she found out that he had been in her closet. Who said children were stupid? It was hidden in your woodpile, Sims stated, looking directly at Bubba. Sims held his five-foot, eight-inch frame up as tall as it would go. Both of his thumbs were tucked into his gun belt, and Bubba longed to comment that he could never get to his service revolver in time if he kept his thumbs there. But that was like going into Ms. Demetrius's closet. The police would not care for a statement like that. Bad things would happen if such was uttered. Anyone could have put it there, Ms. Demetrius shrieked. It's not like it's locked up. Half the county has been wandering through the mansion on tours and such, and knows about every inch of the two houses. Be that as it may, started Sheriff John. Ms. Demetrius interrupted. That circumstantial evidence, Sheriff John. She was possessed, as if she was a woman on a holy mission. She shook one of her tiny fists at the law enforcement official as if that would take care of business all by itself. Unfortunately, it did not. Sheriff John sighed a deep sigh, indicating that he sincerely wished he was anywhere but in this place at this time. Bubba, you're under arrest for suspicion of murder. Turn around, please. All right, so that's a little taste of Bubba and the Dead Woman by C.L. Bevel. I hope you'll check out the audiobook. Uh, it'll be on audible.com. And uh, it's a real good time. So hope you enjoyed some of the voices.